we're basically going to duplicate an animated object using cloner and then we're going to kind of add a slight difference to the animation interval for each clone so like you get this kind of randomized uh, animation effect but we're only using like one cube with a bend deformer that's animated once and then we're using a shader effector with time offset to uh, get kind of different results slightly different animations for each clone and then I'm gonna show you how to um, loop animation so basically the band as you can see has only a uh, free keyframes but the animation continues after these free keyframes so we're just gonna start from scratch for this tutorial um, as usual just gonna create a new scene so let's create a cube simplest uh, type of object <laughs> and I'm just gonna make the X and Y sizes um, sorry the X and Z sizes 44 and the height Y 200 which might make it 250 so we got this like one uh, rectangular object I'm just gonna add some Y segments and now I'm gonna add a bend deformer under the cube here what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an Expresso tag to the cube. I'm going to drop in the cube and the bend deformer. I'm going to go to cube, go to coordinates, sorry, object properties, size X. I'm going to get object properties, size Y and object properties, size Z. And then in the bend, in the blue section, object properties, size X size Y and size Z. I'm just going to link these two together and um, what that's going to do is basically it's just going to snap the bend um, operator to the cube. So if I resize this cube bend operator follows. It's an exact snap. <clears throat> so now the bend. I'm just going to animate the bend. Um, start at zero strength maybe start at minus 65 keyframe there <clears throat> come to frame 20 uh, 63 keyframe there and I'm just gonna select this keyframe here and then hold down control and drag it to frame 40 and that's just gonna basically loop it because it's just a copy of the frame from 0 on 40 so we've got this bend um, I'm actually going to set it to keep keep y axis length so this like the length doesn't keep shifting so let's play that back great so just once it animates so if you want to loop this animation forever instead of like copying and pasting these keyframes again and again and again just go to strength right click animation show f curve And what's going on here? Cube bend. Strange. Bend. Animation. F curve. All right. Don't know what happened there. So we can see the uh, animation curve we created. Now, if you click, you can see the bend deformer here. If you click strength, you'll notice in the panel over here, we've got more options. So, and one of those options is. The, the ability to oscillate the animation before and after and then give it a number of repetitions so say 99 lots of repetitions and um, if I zoom out you can see that the animation is basically been um, it's just basically oscillating again and again and again 99 times before and after and if I just play that back again even though we have those um, just three keyframes, it's just going to continue. I'm just going to make the animation length about 300. So that just goes on and on and on. The advantage of doing this is we can basically then like modify uh, the keyframes and it's going to update all the kind of keyframes after just automatically. Okay. So we've got that. Now we're just going to create a cloner. 
drop in the cube and I'm just gonna go to the Z value and type 200 and the Y value I'm just gonna make that zero I'm gonna go to count and maybe create 10 so we've got these 10 clones right and if I play this back all of them are uh, animating at the same speed now there'll be a situation when you're working with Cinema 4D you'll want you're, you're gonna want a slightly different interval for each clone just to give it a kind of nice organic uh, random effect so how are we gonna do that so as I told you I don't know what the timer effector does the time effector I'm gonna do a tutorial on this soon but I just um, I would have thought that just offsetting here would have uh, given them like a, an offset for each one but like no matter what I do I, I just can't find a way to randomize the animation intervals so I'm actually really interested in this but one way I know how to do it is to use a shader effector so I'm just gonna add a shader, shader effector to that cloner if I go into the options I'm not interested in scale turn that off and I'm not even interested in color mode so I'm just gonna turn that off and what I'm gonna do is as you can see if I add an offset we can add a time offset in the shader effector but again it just kind of does all the clones at the same time so we need to add some randomization so I'm gonna go to the shading tab and I'm gonna add uh, noise and now as soon as I play that back it's pretty much done what we want because it's basically using a, the grayscale values of the noise map to create sort of randomness in the animation and it's using it in conjunction with the time offset here so that is how I know that is one method of staggering the animation Should make, I'll make it 500 frames just to make it a bit longer So that is the technique I use, and I'm really interested in what the time effector does. I'll probably crack it soon, but um, to me it seems like it's just basically, uh, I mean the shader effector seems to do exactly what I want, so I can't actually imagine what you would use a time, or time effector for. But um, Okay, so that's one method of uh, randomizing the time offset, and we can make it more extreme. So there you go. Now we can add more clones. Now let's make a grid. Uh, whoops, it's gonna alien plant. <laughs> and yeah, I think the offset's a bit crazy. So there you go. Some uh, crazy effects you can make. You can mess with the minimum and maximum could probably add a, a rigid body tag so it detects collisions apply tag to tr children all <laughs> and it's just exploded uh, but if we go to force and follow position we can uh, retain some of the animation using follow position follow rotation but that is another tutorial <laughs> so uh, yeah, I think that's the closest we're gonna get I think the distance between the clones had to be larger Actually, that should be zero there we go and then that should be yeah it's getting all a bit crazy but yeah I, I just wanted to show you how to uh, uh, give each cloner a different time interval in terms of animation so I hope that kind of helped just ignore whatever has uh, happened here <laughs> uh, thanks for watching